Well, if we could bottle what we did on Saturday and take it with us to Air Force, I think we'd be in pretty good shape. But that's not how college basketball wins. It's up for us to spend these next two days of practice uh, not being satisfied but wanting to get better and uh, keep that process rolling. Momentum doesn't just happen. You have to work to keep it going. And uh, we will go out on the practice floor today and work to keep our momentum going as we head onto the road for two games against teams that uh, we've beaten earlier in the season. And uh, we have to find a way to have some success on the road uh, as we close our last four games of the conference out. Dutch, can you talk a little bit about the guy next to you here, Player of the Week? <laughs> Jalen's Player of the Week, which is a heck of an honor for uh, not only any Aztec, but a freshman. So Jalen just plays with high energy, high motor. And so he fills the stat sheet up. It's points, it's rebounds, it's effort plays. And uh, you like to see uh, guys rewarded for hard work. And right now, Jalen's being rewarded and the team's being rewarded for the hard work they're putting in. So hopefully uh, a week from now, we're talking about Jalen McDaniels being conference player of the week, back-to-back -back weeks. So he's done a wonderful job. Jalen, your thoughts about, about winning the honor? Uh, I mean, it feels pretty good. I mean, uh, I wouldn't be here for if it wasn't for our team, you know. They put me in the right positions to score, you know, when I get the ball. And, um, I mean, just playing hard just and uh, playing with a lot of energy, I mean, it just pays off, I guess. It was extra good, too, because Jalen's mom was in town oh, yeah. for two games. <laughs> I think her first two Aztec games. Yeah. So that we may have to get her back for all the games if that's, uh, if that's the kind of performance <laughs> we're going to get. So I'm happy that Jalen's mom was in town to watch him play so well against Wyoming and UNLV. Jalen, against uh, UNLV, you and Malik were trading uh, like alley-oop dunks. You guys were like lob city. Is that something you guys are trying to do? Just have the ball be exciting? I feel like um, it helps us have a lot of energy. It boosts everybody up to play on defense and offense, just to focus in more. And um, I feel like we can play like that when we run the floor. And I feel like we were running the floor a lot, getting wide open dunks, you know? So I feel like that helps us. What would you say is the difference in these past two games as, as far as how you guys have played the next few years? What, what was the difference? Um, I feel like it just started in practice, you know? just focusing more on practicing, doing what we need to do. And when we do that, it translates to the game. And I feel like we was having great practices. So we're in the game. It felt not easy, but you know, we knew what to do. So when you say you were more focused in practice, mm -hmm. what that implies that you weren't as focused before. And I don't know if that's what you're trying to say. No, I'm not trying to say that. I'm just saying like, we knew what we, what's at stake. We know we have to win these games, you know? And I feel like everybody is just coming together like even more as a team and becoming closer. So I feel like it's helped. Did it feel as good as it looked as far as being able to kind of break out and play the way you guys really yeah. your potential? I mean, yeah, it felt good because we practice like that every day. So it felt good to show it. Like were you guys, I mean, in the locker room afterwards, because the guys were pretty subdued in game uh, here. Were you guys fired up in the locker room afterwards? Yeah, of course, of course, yeah. What were you doing? I mean, like, you know, just having fun, jumping around, stuff like that. <laughs> we got to wait for Malik to get in there. He yeah. had a post-game interview. So we got a little louder and more animated when Malik made it to the locker room. What did so. you say? What did you say to him? Afterwards? What did I say to him afterwards? Job well done. I had the words on the board. I think it was faith and trust. So I went back to that a little bit. Have faith in the process, trust in each other, and the best basketball is yet to come. So it's a thought. You know, sometimes it sinks in, sometimes it doesn't. I always feel good for saying it. So how much it sinks in, we'd have to ask the players down the road. But, uh, you know, try to deliver the right message and, and then uh, enjoy the moment. Celebrate these successes. Don't think too far down the road. Celebrate the times when they happen, and then we'll go back to work today and get ready for Air Force. Um, I feel like we, it just goes to show that we could put two halves together. I know we were like struggling in the second half when we were up, but I feel like in this game we showed everyone that we could put two halves together and play and win by a large margin like that. What did it mean to the team too to, to have that big lead and to have, a, well, it's kind of going back to Wyoming, um, to have the team come back and like kind of cut in your lead and to be able to hold on to that and uh, really uh, take a stand at the end to show that you can, uh, you can withstand the you know, team's 
Uh, I mean, you just got to, on defense, it all starts on defense. You know, you just got to lock in and just focus. And against the UNLV, I feel like we did that the whole second half. You know, maybe we messed up a few times. But against uh, Wyoming, I feel like we came out in the second half a little bit slow, and then they got on a run. And um, that's how they kind of came back into the game. And I feel like with UNLV, we just shut it down. Do you think that maybe was because of the game before when you kind of left? Yeah. Yeah, of course. In like previous games, you know, we just try to just bring it all together. It's a learning process. You know, every game is different. Every team is different. And like I said, after the Wyoming game, I had just seen them come from 20 down to take a lead at UNLV. So I knew what they were capable of. And obviously, we preached to the team that uh, at UNLV, they shot 60% on us in the second half. And that if we were going to make steps forward, we had to do it at the defensive end. And so I think they've responded well. So the task is to not be satisfied, to not be Vegas this week where you're running high, you're winning three in a row, or you're winning five out of six, and just have enough of a, a letdown where a team can come in and get us. So now we have to avoid a little letdown. Even though we're going on the road, we know it's going to be tough. We have to remain focused on the important things and see if we can build some momentum. We kind of have the opposite task in the last few games where you're trying to avenge earlier losses. Now you're going up against a couple teams that you've beaten. A little bit different mindset, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I'll be talking to the team for two days on Air Force and then another two on San Jose that we lost at both these places last year. We lost at Air Force and we lost at San Jose. So these are not easy places. I remember Air Force last year, Malik got landed on and doubled over and couldn't continue the game. And I'm not, I think it was early in the first half or mid first half, he got knocked out for the game. So anything can happen. And so we can't let our guard down. We have to come out and play our best basketball of the year on the road and prove to people that we can be a good road team. And it starts on Wednesday. What were the assessments, Dutch, of both the good and the bad from the first Air Force game this year? What did you really like and what do you need to do better? We zoned Air Force for the first time in a long time. And I thought that was effective. With that being said, they'll know that this time around. I don't think they anticipated us zoning them for as long as we did. So we'll continue to get back to uh, defending the Princeton offense. Uh, I thought we did a good job leading into the first Air Force game. But the zone was successful, so we stayed in it. But we have to prepare for two days that uh, our, we may have to rely on our man offense at times this game and get our, our man defense and, and get it back on point when you play a team that uh, plays unlike anybody else in the conference. We'll work hard for two days on our man-to-man -man defense and try to get it up to snuff where we can go to Air Force and have some success. Is there a sense now after the game the other night that at your best, you guys can play with anybody in this conference? We'll find out over the next two weeks. You know, with the two road games followed by Boise and Nevada, we'll know at the end of two weeks if we can play with anybody in the conference, because we'll be tested and we'll have a pretty good indication of where we stand going into the tournament, you know, especially closing with Boise and Nevada, the one and two teams in the conference. And I see Nevada's climbed to number 20 in the polls this week. So it's, uh, you're tested every night. So we'll be tested Wednesday, but uh, we'll have a pretty good indication of where we are over these last two weeks heading into postseason play, that if we continue to grow as a team, uh, we can be very dangerous. Sense good for the conference that they've risen to 20 and absolutely yeah I'd like I wish we had four teams ranked in the conference right now but uh, Nevada's done the best job uh, Boise's close and then I think any of the rest of us uh, could win the conference tournament Fresno's playing great basketball UNLV obviously being home at the Thomas and Mac San Diego State when we catch stride and we start playing well down the stretch uh, Wyoming has proven they've won some big games this year. Obviously, they've won six overtime games, which is unheard of. So there are a lot of very competitive teams in this conference capable of uh, making a run in the conference tournament. And so we'll see who's playing their best uh, in early March when we play that thing. Jalen, can I ask you real quick about um, Jordan Shackle? Mm -hmm. Shackle, um, kind of your relationship with him, what have you seen? You're a guy who's getting to play a lot. Jordan's having to come off the bench. What have you seen from him as far as being kind of being able to handle his role? 
I mean, uh, he comes every day to practice, ready to compete and learn. Um, so, I mean, when he gets in the game, he's already ready. Every time he gets in the game, every time he checks in, he does his job. And I feel like we need that boost off the bench that everyone brings off the bench. So, I feel like he's being he's being a big part of the team. A lot of talk about him kind of being this perfectionist type mm -hmm. of guy. Do you see that in him kind of on a daily basis or in practice? Or, and where do you see it? I mean, um, yeah, a little bit, you know, like he sh uh, gets extra shots up and, you know, on the defensive end, just trying to make sure he knows what he's doing, you know, seeing the ball every play, things like that, just getting better at the little things. Yeah. Yeah. And then personality-wise, do you, uh, you got, how are you guys? Oh, yeah. Me and Jordan are we, good friends, you know. He's a real good dude, so. Jalen, uh, coming into the season, did you expect to be performing at this high of a level, you know, start being in the starting lineup, you know, at this point? Or did you expect coming into freshman that you would have more of a role in Jordan? Um, I mean, um, I can't say that I expect to have this year, but I mean, I've always been confident in myself and I know what I can do on the floor. So, I mean, I'm just out here just playing hard for my team, you know, and um, I feel like it's, you can see, you guys can see. You know. What does it mean to you personally and your confidence, everything to know that you can come in here as a freshman and make this much of an impact? And make this um, just, just keep working hard, you know. Um, just keep working hard and do it, do what I've been doing and I feel like everything else will just come together.